Hello Linux fans and welcome to Linux Quest. Today we're going to take a look at Fedora 28. We're going to take a look at the spin that includes the KDE Plasma desktop as opposed to the workstation release with the GNOME or GNOME desktop as their kind of default if you will for workstation. And I want to talk about why I think the KDE Plasma desktop is a much better option for anyone coming from an alternative OS or if you're maybe kind of new to Linux and you want to explore Fedora, I want to kind of step through some of the reasons why I think you should take a look at this spin as opposed to their default GNOME desktop. Now don't get me wrong, in the past I had some excitement over GNOME and the extensions and all of the things that you could put in place to make it, should I say, a little more user friendly. But none of that's in place uh, when you install the default GNOME workstation, or excuse me, the default Fedora <laughs> workstation uh, with the GNOME desktop. So what you get there is plain Jane vanilla GNOME desktop. There's no GNOME tweaks in place, really no extensions or anything like that in place to help you familiarize yourself with what's going on within that desktop environment. And for me, it's just not really intuitive until you go in and really, uh, you know, put the mojo on it and do a lot of tweaking and adding a lot of extensions. Uh, DistroTube's got a nice video where he steps through, I think it's titled uh, Make the GNOME Desktop Not Suck or something like that. So check that out. And Plus, I've got lots of videos um, where I go in and set up extensions and do tweaks and things to make it more user friendly. Alright, well let's jump over first of all and take a look at what's new. And so some of this is going to cross over into the GNOME desktop. We're gonna, and then we're going to bounce back and we're going to take a look at uh, the reasons why I say to go with this particular spin. Alright, so let's jump over to what's new in Fedora. So one of the standout things that have uh, changed within Fedora 28 is the third-party repositories. Now it's not turned on by default. You can turn a switch or flip a switch. Turn a switch or flip a switch. Take your pick. Uh, <laughs> nevertheless, and you're going to turn on some third-party repositories that allow you to install things like Google Chrome, um, NVIDIA's proprietary driver, the Steam client, things like that. Now in the past you had to go in and install RPM Fusion free and non-free to get some of this software. So it doesn't open up you know, a Pandora's box of software, uh, but it does give you some things and make it easier to obtain those without going through the steps to set up RPM Fusion, which we'll take a look at as well. Now this is within the GNOME desktop, so uh, on the KDE side of things, I haven't found or just maybe there's not a switch to turn on this repository. So you're going to want to turn on RPM Fusion anyway. Now so the, some of the other improvements here, you've got improved battery life for laptops. So that's certainly welcome. And again here it's going to be an updated GNOME 3.28 for the default version as opposed to this KDE spin. You'll have Thunderbolt support. I know for many of you that will be nice. And I laughed here at improved emoji support. I guess I'm showing my age probably or whatever, but I just think really of all things that you just care about update, updating, it's improved emoji support. Uh, another thing to note here in the default version of 28, uh, GNOME Photos is going to replace Shotwell, and I would beg to differ that Shotwell is a better choice there, but nevertheless, that's what you're going to get. VirtualBox Guest Editions are now default. Streamline Installation, and uh, yeah, I guess it is. Uh, so what happens is, uh, now this doesn't apply with this particular KDE spin, but on the GNOME version of Workstation, uh, you don't enter a username or password. All of that kind of is skipped over and actually what will happen is once the installation has completed it'll reboot then it'll pop up a screen asking for your username and password which is you know it's different but for a new user maybe that's not super intuitive or really streamlined. Uh, the other thing I'll say is that Anaconda I think has never really been the most intuitive installer when it comes to setting up your partitions and you know uh, things like reclaiming hard drive space uh, to me it's just never been super intuitive it, it works but I think there are better options 
so that's kind of the roundabout list of what's new in Fedora 28. Now let's pop over here to RPM Fusion and I'll put a link here on how to enable and set up the free and non-free portions of, of RPM Fusion. This kind of opens up a lot more software for you. And if you're brand new to Linux and you wondered you know, why this would need to happen, it's because Fedora is completely free and open source. So the software offerings there aren't going to be like um, an Arch-based distro or even Ubuntu for that matter. Uh, because it's only going to have things that have uh, free and open source license. All right, so we'll put links there. Um, so next up, I just want to step through a few of my points, a few of my reasons for saying that KDE Plasma Desktop would be a better default choice for Fedora. So before we jump into um, a few reasons why I think uh, Fedora should choose KDE as their default desktop, kind of making my case, if you will, I want to point you over to a video on DistroTube's channel. Uh, he's got a video, Making GNOME Tolerable in Fedora 28. Um, so check this out. He's got some um, updates and some things. My videos on tweaking uh, the GNOME desktop and things are a little older, so that's why I want to point you here. Uh, it's a good video. He's got um, over 7,000 views here, uh, and he'll go through some of the steps and the process of making it tolerable. And I agree, it's just, it's simply not user friendly in its current state. So, uh, all right, I'm going to jump on over here and make my case. So, one of the things I want to point out, now I've got some theming in place here. I turned on the dark theme as opposed to the default theme because I think that would be a good look for the Fedora team to consider out of the box. So the first thing I want to point out is the application launcher. I also switched over to just the application menu and I think for anyone coming from Windows this would be a nice option. This would be easy for them to understand and navigate. Now what you get, let's go over here to this image this is what you would see in the default GNOME desktop. Uh, this is your only option. So it's this kind of full screen launcher, if you will, which, you know, if you've got a touch screen or something on your laptop, that might be a good option. But there's nothing built into Fedora 28 on the GNOME side that will let you go in and change this. You have to install GNOME tweaks and, uh, you know, and use some other extensions and things to change the way you access your applications where with NKDE built in, you have lots of options here. Well, three options that you typically see. Um, by default, you're going to see the application launcher. So that's what you'll see when you launch into the KDE spin of Fedora 28. And it's perfectly easy to navigate as well. And it's more suited to a desktop user. So if we go into settings, you'll see that scroll there. Now, if you like that full screen, application launcher that's built in as well I'm not going to switch to that right now I'm going to move on well actually let me go ahead in case you haven't seen this before within KDE so that's what you get here kind of similar in that you get large icons here you can scroll you've still got your favorites log out reboot and shutdowns there as well now I'm going to switch back to the application menu and I just think that this particular setup, as we see here, would be a good option for the Ford Fedora team to consider uh, moving forward. I think it's more intuitive and user-friendly. All right, so moving on next, we're going to take a look at my second reason for saying Fedora should choose KDE, and that's the file manager. And in this case, it's Dolphin. And anyone who's watched Linux Quest videos, you know I love the Dolphin file manager. From the standpoint of looking professional, number one, uh, the standpoint of having all of the options in place and being able to configure things within Dolphin that allow you to use it in a multitude of ways, adding shortcuts and triggers and um, setting up the panels and adjusting the view properties. It's just all there. It's fully loaded. Whereas with, let me go back here. Well, <laughs> minimize that. Uh, let me go back here. Whereas with the files within GNOME, I'm going to show you what you get here. 
you get this and you do get a few options but to me this just kind of looks Mickey Mouse and this is the way it looks within Fedora 28 it doesn't look and this is all opinion and you know you know what they say about opinion um, everybody's got one but uh, to me this just looks kindergartenish um, you don't have all of the control in place that I think you would need with a file manager especially if you're someone who's using your operating system for business use if if you're more focused in on the desktop experience slash business use um, you just don't have a lot of control here alright so that's my number two argument and then number three let's just get into the settings uh, capability of KDE your system settings in particular and we'll do a little comparison there to that as well so you've got appearance workspace personalization network and hardware and I'm just going to point out one here and that's going to be under appearance so you have some built-in themes uh, desktop theme here and by default you see Fedora 28 when you first load in so we'll switch that um, that's what you saw when I first opened the video so it's kind of a white sparse look I wouldn't recommend this for Fedora I think if you switch back over to the breeze dark which is built in I think it gives it a classier look and then you may even go under look and feel you may go with breeze dark entirely and then you'll see the changes there alright so that's all taking place and I just think for Fedora that would be a very nice option um, you know and it, it goes beyond that it's just that someone that's maybe trying Fedora for the first time is gonna base their experience off of the interaction that they have with your desktop and there's just simply nothing there that's intuitive that in my opinion makes it user friendly for someone to say hey how would I set this up or if I wanted it to work this way how would I go about doing that yeah there's lots of resources to find all of that out I'm talking about your first launch your first experience what have you got there to hook that user and say hey keep using me keep keep working with me as far as an OS is concerned um, you know something to pull them in and make them appreciate what it is they're working with and you could say this about other distributions but in particular I'm gonna pick on Fedora because within 28 there's nothing there in the GNOME desktop that that stands out to say to that user hey if you come over here and you turn this switch on or install this uh, all of a sudden now you can go in with that control and add extensions and and add the theming and everything if you go back over let me pop back over here um, well I actually had it open let me pop back over here to settings and this is what you see within GNOME uh, default Fedora 28 so you've got background that you can change but there's nothing there for themes uh, you've got sound and power and you know they do a good job keeping everything looking clean and minimal uh, but you've got a lot more control within KDE so you know that'll be another reason why um, why I think they should go this route now <clears throat> if you look at Ubuntu and some of the other distributions that are using the GNOME desktop as default then you know they have added some of their own tweaks and some of their own settings and things like that to improve that user experience I'm not saying they've got it nailed I'm just saying it's a better um, application than what you would find within Fedora 28 so could I load this up and use it with KDE with the KDE spin absolutely would I feel at home right away with it and, and do I think that other uh, people coming from other operating systems would absolutely I think this would be a much better option now one thing I wanna I save this I just wanna point out that if you decide to install this there are 577 new updates there's actually more than that and that brings me to another point so we're gonna go into discover now the software manager within the GNOME desktop it's perfectly fine it's it's actually not bad at all 
Uh, Discover is one of those areas within KDE that has continued to improve, and it's at a point now where I think it's fantastic. I think they have arrived, so to speak. Uh, you've got Plasma add-ons. If you had Kden Live, uh, you could choose add-ons for that. So it's more than just applications. It's add-ons, themes, uh, things like that, uh, system settings. Uh, there's just a lot here. And I think that if the Fedora team went in and did some theming and added kind of their own Fedora look to Discover, I think it would give it a great cohesive feel and uh, then they could have, you know, that toggle switch somewhere. <laughs> Let's see here. Where would you put it? I don't know where you'd put it, but you could then turn on the repository, maybe down here uh, or under settings. You could turn that on. Now, this is a pretty big list of updates. Uh, just installed this today, uh, so 640. Now, what this is going to do is take, um, it's going to take it up to KDE 512. 5 to plasma 5125 5. uh let's see what else system updates flat pack back end is going to be updated network manager let's see keep scrolling here breeze icons and things like that will be updated uh, fedora updates so you'll if you install this after watching this video then expect a fairly large update so I just wanted to save that out so that you could see that so yeah that's going to take it to plasma let me see let me go back up scroll past I need to pay attention what I'm doing as I'm doing these videos here uh, let's see here KDE yeah 512.5 which puts you at a very recent KDE plasma now let me go back to system and info center and we'll take a look here. Yeah, we're at 5.12.4. KDE framework of 5.44. Uh, kernel of 4.16.3. That's it for now. And as always, thanks for watching.